Okay. Now, last time we were discussing about graphs. Let's continue from the same point. We we drew some of the graphs. If if you remember, there were three different cars, and the data were given, and then we drew all these graphs, and then we saw how graph um, the curve of the graph explains not only the quantity but the change of the quantity and they are two separate things okay a quantity can be increasing with a decreasing change a quantity can be increasing with an increasing change and a quantity can be changing with a or quantity can be increasing with a constant change now let's discuss graphs in journal graphs so and in physics we we have to deal with many of them so let's let's discuss what is common for all of the graphs so let's say if this is a cartesian plane x axis and y axis this is the origin this is x axis this is y axis if we see a graph going up we can clearly see and we can say that the value on the y axis is increasing for all these three kind of curves we can say the quantity on y axis is increasing and if we see a horizontal line like this it means quantity on y axis is constant and if we see a graph coming down from left to right like this it means the quantity on y is decreasing this is also a decreasing y this is also a decreasing y decreasing y decreasing y now that is very simple that is something that you can just look and understand some of the things are explained by the gradient of the graph now what is gradient let's see if this is a graph excuse me no we take two points on the graph one and two draw a horizontal line from the lower point and a vertical line from the higher point we end up with a right angle triangle this is the right angle 90 degree this is considered to be the rise and this is run okay so what is gradient equals to rise divided by run now gradient is rise divided by run everybody knows that that is a very common formula and some math students they also know that the gradient is rise over run so rise is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus <coughs> x1 excuse me now <clears throat> what sense does the gradient give you what is the sense behind it now if you are good with right triangles and and uh, trigonometry that you have done in uh, all levels in igcsc previous years you might understand the right angle triangles every side has a name so according to this angle that the graph makes with the x axis the opposite side is rise and the adjacent side is run the ratio between like we all know tan theta equals to perpendicular over base i i i would like you to compare this because uh, most of the student they they have trouble understanding graphs this is a very important thing for you to know graph gradient of the graph is actually tan of the angle that graph makes with the x axis the red line is the graph it makes theta angle with the x axis 
when we find rise of a tan, we actually find tan of this theta. Now listen. Tan theta equals to gradient. So theta is directly proportional to gradient. Now, for those who have trouble understanding whether gradient is increasing or decreasing, positive or negative, if you if you stay with me on this one, you will understand that what do I mean when I say gradient is increasing or gradient is decreasing or gradient is constant. Look, um, I, I would need these axes again. <laughs> Let's say this is example one, example two, just one second. Listen, for example, if we have a curve which is which looks like this, and we want to know what is happening to the gradient of this graph. What is happening to the gradient of the graph? So what we can do is we can select any random three points along the graph, A, B, C. In the beginning, you, you might need to do that, but but with the practice, you, you this will become very natural and very easy. So we have three points, A, B, and C. On every single point, you have to draw an imaginary x-axis. Okay? Now, look. This is angle at A. This is angle at B. This is angle at C. So what is happening to the angle of the graph with the x-axis? Like for example, if you draw tangent at B and tangent at A and tangent at C and compare the angle with the imaginary x-axis, you can clearly see the angle is increasing. So it means gradient is increasing and positive. Now, similarly, if we have a graph which is like this, again, to see whether gradient is increasing or decreasing, we can select a point in the beginning, somewhere around the middle, somewhere close to the top, and, and we can make some imaginary x-axis. One, two, three. And then we can see what is happening to the angle. Let's say this is theta A. This is theta B. And this is theta C. So I hope you can clearly see angle with the x-axis is decreasing as we move from left to right. That means... Excuse me, gradient of this curve is decreasing and positive. So, listen, I'm not telling you what is the quantity on y axis, so I'm just telling you the variation of the gradient. Now, which quantity gradient explains? That is a totally separate concept, and at the end, uh, I will be explaining that as well. Let's now see what, what else can be the case. For example, if we have a graph like this, a straight line. So what we do is we select any three points, A, B, C. We draw 
imaginary x axis and and you you have to do them in your head you don't need to draw them on 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 the screen or on on the paper you can just draw them in your head and see that what is happening to the angle now angle is constant so it means gradient is constant and positive now <clears throat> what if we have a horizontal line like this this means this line is parallel to the x axis so the angle with the x axis is zero this line is parallel to x axis so angle from the x axis is zero gradient is zero no gradient <laughs> <coughs> no, excuse me. Listen, uh, if we have a graph like this, what we can do is again, we can select any three points A, B, and C, and we can draw the imaginary x axis. And now the angle is obviously you can see that it is on the opposite side of the x axis. It, it, the, the angle is now in the negative side. So we can see that the angle is increasing, but it is negative. So the gradient is increasing. But negative. <coughs> the value of gradient is increasing, but it is negative. No. This is another possible curve. So we do the same thing here. Yeah. This is A, this is theta A, this is B point, this is theta B point, this is C, and this is theta C point. So, gradient is negative and decreasing okay now this is all about the curves that we can see there can be negative constant as well i did not draw that but i hope after understanding these all these that would be very easy to understand now uh important thing what quantity is represented by the gradient of the graph listen So here's a graph. This is quantity on y-axis. This is quantity on x-axis. We select any two points. We draw a horizontal line from the lower point. We draw a vertical line from the higher point, And we end up with a triangle, a right angle triangle. This is rise. This is run. And the gradient is rise divided by run. This is a point where you, where you have to pay attention a little bit more. Rise is, is taken as y2 minus y1. So rise depends on rise depends on the values on the y-axis. This is the rise. So rise comes from y-axis where does the run come from so run comes from 
x-axis. So quantity of gradient is equal to quantity on y-axis divided by quantity on x-axis. I have seen some students in very, uh, very much pain who are trying to remember the gradient of each graph that, okay, gradient of this graph is this, gradient of this graph is this, gradient of this graph is this. So the problem is that the list is so long that no human can remember all of those gradients. Okay, it is possible to remember the gradients that are presented to you in AS and A2, but still it is very difficult. But in general, in physics, it is not possible to remember the gradient of every graph. So this is a concept that you, you can keep with you so you can find out the gradient of any graph. Quantity of the gradient is quantity on y-axis divided by quantity on x-axis. I'm giving you some examples here. Let's see. Um, here we have distance and we have time. So there is a graph. In this case, when we will be doing gradient, we will be doing rise over run. But listen, the rise will be a distance. And run would be a time. So in this case, gradient will be rise over run, distance over time, which is a quantity. I hope you can understand distance divided by time is speed. So that means if we are dealing with distance time graph, the gradient will be speed. So all these graphs, for example, if it is a distance time graph, it means speed is increasing because, the, because in this graph, if we have distance on y-axis and time on x-axis, because the gradient is increasing and gradient of distance time graph is speed, so that means speed is increasing. Now, if this is a distance time graph, we can see that the gradient is decreasing. It means speed is decreasing. Gradient is constant, so speed is constant. Now, for example, if this is velocity and time. In this case, when we do rise over run, where does the rise come from? Y-axis, where it will be change of speed. divided by run, change of time. So what is change in speed divided by time? What is V minus U over T? Oh, V minus U, rise over run. That is A. So listen, if it is a velocity time graph, and we are finding its gradient, then gradient will be acceleration. Gradient is acceleration. Look, for example, if this is a velocity time graph, now you cannot say the speed is increasing. Speed is increasing, but there is another thing that is increasing with speed. If it is a speed time graph, then you can also tell the acceleration is increasing because the gradient of speed time graph is acceleration. 
So although the speed is increasing in this case, but acceleration would be decreasing if it is a speed time graph. Speed is increasing and acceleration is constant. Speed is decreasing and retardation, deacceleration is decreasing as well. Speed is decreasing, but retardation is increasing. Speed is constant, acceleration is zero. There is no change of speed, so there is no rate of change of speed as well. So these are the basic concepts that we need to know for speed angle. Now, one graph that you haven't done right now till now is um, voltage in volts and current in ampere. If it is a straight line, gradient equals to rise over run. So the rise will come from voltage. Run will come from current. We will be finding gradient by dividing voltage with current. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, we will be dividing voltage with current. What do we get if we divide voltage with current? Electric resistance. So that means in this case, the gradient will be resistance. So these are some examples. There can be many more. So wherever you are confused and you don't remember that what quantity is represented by the gradient of any graph, what you have to do is you have to divide the quantity on y-axis with the quantity on x-axis. And that will give you the quantity of the gradient. I'm not uh, feeling very good today. So excuse me for the uncomfortable sounds over here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> just one second. 